Hey friends, joined by my friend Ricky Lake today. We're talking all about her hair journey, her hair loss to hair growth journey, birth control, and the unbelievable things she found out in her new documentary, her new podcast. Gosh, we talked about a lot of stuff, Ricky. We we covered a lot of bases, I think. We for did. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, it's so nice to reconnect with you. I've Thank always, you. always loved you. And uh, yeah, it was, it's been great. I Thank feel the you. same way. And you guys will too when you listen in. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Our quote of the day comes from our guest. You guys are going to love her. I've always been a believer in everything, everything that we can't tangibly see in front of us. I believe there's something way more than we know in this 3D life. Oh, what a perfect Better Together guest, friends. It's Ricky Lake. Heel Squad, what up? Very excited to chat with my friend Ricky Lake today uh, about her journey with mental health, her hair loss journey. Um, to her hair growth journey, <laughs> yep, motherhood, so much more. Uh, I'm sure you guys all know her from her uh, very, very famous show back in the 90s, The Ricky Lake Show. That's where I first get, became acquainted with Ricky Lake. And then I uh, got to interview her throughout the years on the various entertainment news shows I was a part of. Got to interview her for her documentary, The Business of Being Born, have you girls by a chance ever seen the business of being born? I've never seen it, Maria, but I've been watching the clips and I'm like, okay, I need to see it. She's done a couple and the one about um, birth control too. Mm -hmm. I really want to watch that also. I haven't seen that one yet, but her, the business of being born was so amazing. Mm. Um, really, really shines a light on the business of birth. Wow. And, you know, just kind of everything you would never really think about you know, from inducing and C-sections just to schedule things in and, you know, not really going with the art of pregnancy, which is the baby comes when it wants mm. to come, right? True. And so anyway, it was a really, really powerful piece. So anybody who is interested in giving birth should watch it. Um, I definitely remember watching it and thinking, wow, this is how I want to give birth someday. Now I'm technically not going to be the one giving birth <laughs> someday, but uh, I didn't know that at the time. So, um, but I do highly recommend it. I think it's incredible. And so, yeah, Ricky Lake uh, has been a TV host for years, an actress. Now she's also a podcast host. She has her new show called Raised by Ricky with Ricky Lake and Kaylin Allen. Kaylin, who was, I don't know what exactly he did with Ellen. With Ellen. He Because started, I wasn't familiar with him until I listened to Ricky's podcast. So he's a riot. He actually started on Instagram. He would do like, Instagram, YouTube, he did like funny, quirky food um, reaction videos. Mm -hmm. And so he was one of the people that Ellen was like, this is hilarious. I'm obsessed with your video. Brought him on. They had such a good chemistry. So he stayed on and would do like fun pieces with her and would do a lot of the Ellen tube stuff. And actually, one of our after buzzers is like one of his best friends. So, anyway, no, no way. Who? yeah, Tori, Tori Weaver, oh, who's cool. amazing. So, yeah, it's just a whole small circle. That's, That's cool, so fun. Well, I love them together on this podcast. I was listening to, uh, I listened to two episodes last night: the Rosie O'Donnell episode and the Andy Cohen one. And wow, oh, I feel like I can't breathe. I can hear my voice in here. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> a little thickness in the, <laughs> the lungs. It's raining outside, so probably all the pollen mm. is kind of kicking up. But uh, yeah, I really liked them together. I just, and I really liked the podcast. It was really fun. I actually fell asleep to Andy Cohen. I don't know if that's a compliment, but I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Hilarious. As I was saying, I'm like, he's going to think this isn't a compliment, but. They were, uh, they were really fun to listen to as they rewind back to the 90s and, uh, and kind of what that period was like for all of them. I loved it, especially the Rosie episode too. So pretty cool. And um, guys, it's November 16th. Holy moly. Thanksgiving is upon us. Kevin's birthday is upon us. Two days from the official Queen's birthday, <laughs> Queen Kev. And I still don't know what I'm getting him. Same. Although we're not big kind of gift givers. I mean, it's like there has to be huge inspiration for us to like get something. And because we can get ourselves what we want, basically. So we're like, mm, why well, have the extra stress of what am I going to get her or him? But 
Um, I'm still trying to think if there's something that will wow him other than leaving him alone so he can sleep, <laughs> which maybe I'll, I'll make a big card. That's like, that would be cute. Congratulations. I will leave you alone for a whole week so you can sleep. It's like what we used to do as kids for our moms. Like <laughs> this is one free ticket for me doing the laundry or one free ticket for you. Do you remember that Elaine? <laughs> yeah. Right. So you should do that. Maria. Like one free ticket for me, not you know, bugging you today. Oh my God. Like, Actually, I like that. I'm right? going to do a board and I'm going to tape tickets Perfect. on and he can rip the tickets. I won't talk to you today <laughs> <Yeah>. or <laughs> I'll cook you dinner or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, whatever it is. I'm yeah. going to make that for him. That's what he I'm going to do. It. And then he can just, that's his, I mean, listen, you can't get the, the redemption without the ticket, right? You go to Crate and Barrel and you've got your coupon they're not going to give you the item without the coupon. So he's got to give it to me. And then I know I really have to leave. Exactly. Alone. There you go. We figured it out. I like that. Boom. See, keep us like posted. talking things through. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's his birthday and Thanksgiving. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? I'm going home. I'm <laughs> so excited. I never go home for Thanksgiving. Yeah. You've been with us. Yeah. Never. Like it's so, so I'm really, really excited. And now that we're all up on our stream yard, which is amazing, we can do um, all of our stream yard shows, our stream yard chat shows for a week of Thanksgiving. So it'll be fun. Sweet. Yeah. I'm excited. And yeah, and I just, I, I never go home for Thanksgiving and it's a beautiful time um, in Seattle. So it will be, it's like just the right amount of time. So is Elaine going back to Seattle? I am not going back home to Seattle. So my family actually do not celebrate Thanksgiving just because, I don't know, we came here and like it was just me and my mom. It didn't really feel like a Thanksgiving feeling. We attempted it once with a rotisserie chicken and that was it. But I am going to celebrate with a friend's family. So oh. I get a little taste of it. Well, you can come back to Connecticut. That's true. I do love it. Though. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was really, really nice when we went. Yeah. Did you guys have fun? Tell me. So much fun. It went by fast. Like the week flew by. We actually were so productive. We talked about it on one of our chat shows, but it was like lots of missions. Yeah. Lots of missions. We taped a lot. Um, it was really fun. We had a really good time and it's beautiful there right now. Yeah. So all the Did foliage. you like all the new furniture and stuff? Uh, it looks amazing. Your office looks insane. Right. The puppies are so happy. Yeah. It was really nice. And my dad. Oh, he's oh. great. Oh yeah. Lane, it was your first time with it my dad. Was first time with Costa. He's amazing. I we were like driving out and he's just like blowing leaves on the driveway. I'm like, I, okay, cool. This is like, I've never seen somebody of that age just do that. And he's just like, he's just up and at him and he's like running around the yard. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And also his food guys, they weren't lying. It's like one of the best food I've ever eaten. Like I don't usually like meatballs, but, um, Costa's meatballs, they were, they were a hit with me. I, I loved it. Yeah. He's a good, good chef. Self-taught. Incredible. That's what I was telling her. So good. Yeah, he made he made meatballs and meatloaf one night, and I'm the same way. I'm not really like a big big on either. Insane. I just don't Insane. understand. So it must be past live stuff. My dad never cooked, I and don't then get my it. mom got sick, and all of a sudden, without a cookbook, without instructions, without anything, he just started making these soups, and the soups were outstanding. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to make a soup, and I know how to cook, <laughs> but I never. I've never made soup technically, so it looks really hard. I did make it once in Connecticut you on did. my own, actually. You did. It, it was, was good. pretty good. But um, but he's just, I mean, both my parents are actually really brilliant and gifted, um, but never had the opportunity to like further their education or really kind of, you know, enhance those gifts, I guess, if you would say. So, you know, we get to enjoy it at least. So I'm glad you guys had a good time. Uh, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be with Ricky Lake. You look great, by the way. I have to just ask, first of all, because I was listening to the show last night, I heard all of the ads for, um, hair clin clinic, heart clinic and heart clinic. Yes. yes. Something -A -R -K. you've never needed in your life. <laughs> no, thankfully. You are not a candidate. <laughs> that is not your issue. Yeah, no, I, I became like a, a, a spokesperson for them. And uh, it's one of those weird things. I've never endorsed a product in my entire career. I've never been a paid person for, and I've turned down like opportunity, whether it's like a diet thing or, a, you know, I'm they sure. always come my way. There's no way you and didn't with, turn down a lot if you haven't done anything. 
yeah. So this was the first time and, you know, this product really has helped to like restore my hair, you know, and I think it's a combination of not only these products have been really good for my hair and scalp, but also, um, not stressing about my hair, not coloring my hair, not putting extensions in my hair, you know, like all of the above has helped me but to kind of come to a place of peace about it. This isn't going to be a whole episode on hair, but because it is such a journey, um, I wonder how did you find this product? Because there are a lot of people, there's um there's a product in Whole Foods that a certain celebrity was telling uh, my hairdresser about that's amazing. I can't remember the name of it right now. But I know there are a lot of celebrities who have very little hair, very thin, very little hair, and they really struggle. And then, of course, every everyday people, obviously, you know, it's just the celebrity world is where we live and that's where we mm-hmm. kind of see it. So everyone's struggling to find something that works. How did you come across this product? I shaved my head on New Year's Eve day of 2020. So okay. right at the start of the new decade. And then it was in February that my agent had knew this, this hair, her hair colorist, Tracy Cunningham. Yeah. They were in the, she was in the chair getting her hair colored. They were talking about, you know, me, because I'm a, a client of Nancy's long time. And she's like, Ricky needs to go and get on this product. The tar- she was talking about it. And the guy who's from Denmark, it's a product out of Copenhagen. He was in town and he met with me and he, I mean, he and I cried. It was a very emotional thing. And he's like, I can help you. I can help. And I'm like, I was very cynical because I've tried everything. Like I've literally had steroid shots put in my scalp. I've had this PRP. I've done Propecia. I was on that drug that's not wow. even for women. Wow. Yeah, I was really trying everything and nothing seemed to really kind of rectify, like fix it. And he's like, I, I think I, it's, it's about scalp health and it's about, you know, so anyway, I went on his regimen and I, you know, and four months later, like the guy had before and after he did before and after picture. So I can't explain what is in his product that works, but all I can say is what I've, the success I've had. Where and does I this before this and like after a, exist? We need it so we can pop it up. Oh, 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 I, I can get it for yeah. you. I mean, it's on their website. It's on their website. Cause they did the picture. Wow. You know, so it's like a four month difference. And granted, my hair had grown a little bit, but there's no there's no denying that my hair was fuller. It didn't have like holes. You know, you don't see my scalp anymore. So so you um, had alopecia, right? It's called androgenetic alopecia. So I don't have the autoimmune issue where where everybody where they lose all their hair, their eyebrows, their eyelashes. I didn't have that. I have something that's basically it's like aging. It's like, you know, my my genetics and and. Um, I had fine hair and it was just, you know, I think it was, I, I, it's, it's very common androgenetic alopecia. Um, most, most women will see like a reduction in their hair volume by like, you know, a a significant Mm -hmm. percent over as they get older. Um, I'm not an expert. It's so funny. Like I'm like the poster child for this because I'm not an expert in this field, but I've been on this journey and I've been really, really transparent about it because I, it was like keeping this dark dirty secret that oh, yeah. was really eating at me. When and, something's um, helped you in something that's so painful, you have like a like an obligation to share, I think, because you can help so many people who are struggling with that. There's very few things that are harder for a woman than not having your hair. Like to struggle with that, it's really, really painful. It was it was torture in a lot of ways. Like obviously, I have this great life, and my life is super abundant and full of joy, and 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 so much. I've I'm not I'm not complaining about my life, but this part of my life was definitely something that really was debilitating. Every time I look in the mirror, you know, it was something I would see. I'd see my scalp, right? You know, light would you know shine down, and I'd be self conscious about it. It just was a constant reminder every time I put a brush through my hair or took a shower and saw the hair falling, it just would, and and any woman that has struggled with hair loss knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, it's like deep rooted, you know, you feel like you're losing your femininity. I mean, I'm speaking for myself and um, it was really, really challenging for many, many years. And I feel like I've put it behind me. I no longer, I really am a embracing like my natural hair color, which is so something that, you know, we're not supposed to love our gray hair, but I do. I think it looks cool. You look so this cute. My, it's cool, right? Yeah. I mean, my hair right now. I'm okay. Like I've really made peace. I, I, I love where I'm at. Like I love who I am. I love, you know, how I'm aging. I, I don't do anything to my face. I just feel I'm okay. I'm how okay. How did you get there though? Honestly, 
honestly, I think losing, losing my, my husband to mental illness and, and, you know, Christian Evans, yeah. my, my second husband died by suicide. And, um, I think that journey of, of us being, uh, you know, a couple and loving each other and then losing him, I think something happened in that loss and me having to come to terms with like my, my life without him, I think I started to go inward and do a lot of, a lot of soul searching and work on myself, a lot of plant medicine. I mean, I, you know, I, I can't, I think you're, you, you're really interested in that stuff. I'm not sure if we touched on it before when you I'm did ayahuasca, before. right? Yeah. I've done it many, many times, yeah. but I think those kind of seeking experiences yeah. in addition to like so many other things, I just think I've come to a place of just accepting myself and loving myself the way he loved me. And, and I don't know if you ever met Christian. Did you ever? I think meet we him? did meet once. I believe so. I mean, he was, you know, he, when I would, when I did dance with the stars, which was right before you did it with Derek, Yeah, you know, he would come, he was very present during that time. Like we were very much together, but I think the journey of losing my person in that way, it's just, it, I don't know. It's, I can't really, I can't really put it like, I'm not very articulate about it, but I just think something about that, that process mm -hmm. has gotten to me, me to a place of really like owning who I am, owning the choices I've made, you know, and, and, and appreciating and loving what I am and, and what I'm about. Well, I think when something traumatic and tragic happens, you do have to kind of go inward to like pull yourself up. And as you, yeah. you're seeking, you're finding answers, you're getting better, you're growing. And I think you also see the fragility of life, right? And why are totally. we spending our time worrying if we're too skinny, too fat, too old, too whatever it is, you waste so much time in that space rather than being in joy like you are, where it's like, fuck it. I look amazing. I feel amazing. Like, let's go. Let's yeah. live. Excuse yeah. my language, yeah. but it's true. It is absolutely true. No, I, I really wasted a lot of time just kind of not liking what I saw when I looked in the mirror, whether it was my hair, whether it was me carrying an extra, you know, 20 pounds or whatever. I, I, I definitely still struggle. I'm definitely still a work in progress in a lot of ways, but I've come really far. And I, I, I do like, for the most part, I just am grateful that my body works. It doesn't hurt. I'm 54. I just turned 54. Happy birthday. I just, thank you. And I got married this year. Congratulations. And, <laughs> thank you. I am stoked. Like I am like the way it all worked out. Yes. I have been to hell and back. Um, I have been through dark, dark times when I did not think I would ever find joy again. I, I really struggled five, this is five years ago. Now I really was like I said, seeking. And I was just, I was, I was definitely a mess. You know, I was self-medicating. I was, I mean, I, I just went all over and, and I've come back to a place of real like contentment and um, I'm really healthy and I'm really, really happy. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Thank I'm really you. happy um, that you have, uh, have your beautiful gray hair and that you've shared with us <laughs> what you used. Cause I could tell that the um, ad was authentic. And that's the only reason why I bring it up because people need to know. So we'll put a link to whatever the product hair. Oh yeah. Heart clinic. And I know Clinican. it's a hard thing. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I, I forget what it means in, in Danish or Dutch. I, I can't remember. It's like hair clinic. Maybe it means. Yeah. But Does it work for guys lovely, too? What? It must it, work yeah, for guys. With guys. I'm going to get some for my dad. And he's yeah. His name is Lars and he's the owner. And he's just like one of those, super like emotional, like it's, a, it's personal for him. It's not just a business. And that's what I really, really responded to. And yeah, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm like honored to be able to share my story and that they've actually been able to help me. So cool. Um, so I was listening to the show back to the show, um, last night and I loved it. And it's, it's funny because I don't listen to podcasts and I've been producing, I think I've produced, oh gosh, boy, we did 150 hours a week for 11 years. A lot. A lot <laughs> of podcasts, including mine, but we had a, we have a whole digital network too. And I don't listen to podcasts, which is funny. But um, there, there have been a few in different moments that I've listened to, but I really enjoyed yours probably because I grew up in the 90s as well. And so hearing you and Rosie and Andy Cohen 
I fell asleep to you guys last night with Andy. Um, I listened to oh. most of it, and then right at the end, I lulled away. And I was like, wow, I fell asleep to a podcast. I'm now my husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I am an avid listener. I listen to all different kinds of podcasts, and I had been asked every year to do one. You know, I'd, I'd met with this company mm-hmm. and that company, and you know, they just wanted to do like a general show with me. And I, you know, I, I partnered with Lemonada Media, which if you don't know what they're about, these women, Jess and Steph, they started this company and like three years ago, like they started it, basically both of them had tragically lost their brothers to the opioid epidemic. And they, they their first show was called Last Day, which is about the last days of their brothers' lives. Mm-hmm. And they have gone on to do great work with like gun control and they're, they're incredible. So I, they came to me with the idea of wanting to do a retrospective of my old show. And they called it Raised by Ricky and they brought in, you know, Kaylin Allen, who's amazing. I, I just absolutely adore him. I think he's a superstar. And, you know, I just love the concept of like with 90s nostalgia, you know, we all with what's going on in the world, I think looking back at that time in a way of like, I know I am. And I, and I haven't really spent the time to really reflect on my old show. Like I lived it. I did it for 11 years and I kind of went on to doing other, other things like my documentary film work or whatever. And so I never really have reflected on what that show was for so many during that time. It was, it was modern day therapy. You know, it was like, it was a way for the marginalized and the, the under like the, the, the underdogs basically to be seen and heard and have a voice on my show. And, it's just been really fun going back and having people like Rosie and Andy who are re- re- my real friends. Mm-hmm. You know, I've known them for both for 25 years, both of them. And um, I thought the interviews with them was like, you heard them in a way that you hadn't yeah. really heard them before, you Agreed. know? And um, yeah, so I'm having a blast. It's really, really fun. And I think anyone who either grew up with the show and someone like Kaylin who didn't grow up, he's only mm-hmm. 26 years old. He never grew up with me. Yep. It's just fun to look at it from the lens of today, you know? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And um, and I'll tell you, Rosie, I didn't know that Rosie called you for advice on her talk show and that she was going to be slated up against you. And you're convincing her to do this and she was going to be your competition. Is that right? No, but that's, not really, because she was a different show. First of all, she was on The Morning. Oh, okay. She was live. She was more of a celebrity driven kind of show. It was a totally different thing. Because yeah, you were afternoon. Yeah, it was mostly afternoon. And I, okay. my show was like real people. We didn't yeah. really have celebrities on promoting their For projects. some reason, it felt like you, you said something about she was going to be on the other network and it felt like it was going to be a rival. I'm like, I didn't know they were competitors. So I got that wrong we, in my we, head. We kind of, I mean, I guess we were because we were in the talk show genre, but like yeah. Oprah, Oprah invited me to her studio before I started doing my own show. She was kind enough to invite me to Chicago. I went and saw her production meeting. She gave me tour of the whole no set. Way. I watched her work. Yeah. This is before I went on the air. Wait, were so you guys it was on like, the same network? I forget. It, well, they're syndicated. So okay. no, they were never, I, I mean, I, although I, but who Oprah produced an ABC. It? Sony television was my show. And so Warner how did Brothers she find Rosie. out that you were doing a show to invite you? Uh, Gail Steinberg, who was my co-executive producer, she worked on Phil Donahue and she knew someone at Oprah and basically asked, would you mind if Ricky came, Ricky and I came to watch you work? And this is in 94, wait, 93, 93. No way. Yeah. And she said, yeah. yes. She said yes. And yeah. Then, and I don't know whether she regretted it because we did end up like like being real competition for her. No way. You know? Well, yeah. Our show, our show was like neck you know, and neck. We were not beating. We were neck and neck in a lot no of the demos. No way. I don't we remember because we we I reaching. didn't pay attention to that stuff back then. Yeah. It was like it was definitely a phenomenon. The show came out like gangbusters because the show is specifically for a younger audience. Yeah. That was the whole hook was to have a higher, a younger host like me, because I was 23 when I did the pilot, which, you know, it's 30 years. This year is 30 years wow. since we did that. And then it went on the air September 13th, the same day that Conan O'Brien launched his show. Whoa. So we, we launched the exact same day. And it was just one of this, I mean, it was one of those things like you can't really, it's like light, lightning in a bottle or something, or what so is it? You're 20, needle, needle in a haystack. <laughs> you're 23. You go to Oprah's studio and... Yeah. And you must be like dying because she had been on the air oh. at that point. Oh yeah. I and was on her show as a guest. I was on for hairspray in 1988. And I even told her, and I meant it as a compliment. I didn't, I, on the air, I, I said, I, I want to be the white Oprah. <gasps> no way. <laughs> and no and way. I think they like sent, they bleeped out what I said, but I meant it as like the ultimate compliment. I totally loved her and related to her. And yeah. Yeah. And who knew like, you know, that it was like a, 
I, I, you know, I, I, I willed it to happen. I don't know. That's I never bananas. thought that I could do that. I never, I never was trained. I'm not a journalist, you know. Ricky, so you go into her studio. What did you learn that you took away? I mean, what did I take away? I mean, it was a very, it looked like a really great, fun place to work. Like, I remember there were a lot of women. I loved seeing all the women there. And um, it just was like a seamless production. You know, she, and she was really like down to earth. I mean, this is, we're talking, this was 90, 93. And uh, so this was like, you know, the beginning of her her show as well. And um, I don't know, I was just super impressed and very much starstruck. And, you know, just feeling like, oh my God, I got to be on the a fly on the wall at Harpo Studios, you know? Wow. Very and then cool. did you guys was, keep in touch after? I mean, I can't say I'm like, I have her phone number or anything, but I've seen her over the years and she's been very kind to me. Um, she's the queen, you yeah, know? Of course. I mean, no one, you know, even though we did really well and we got very close to her ratings, you know, I'm very clear with like my, my pers- the perspective I'm at, you know, I'm no wow. way near Oprah. Did you, you know, actually, Oprah's persona? Did you what? actually spend time with her that day? I spent a little time with her. I mean, she was working. She was Mm. definitely working, but she was just generous. It was very kind and generous of her to allow me, who was like, I was a kid, to just even be in her realm, in her, in her sacred space. And, um, it left a mark. I'll never forget the kindness that she gave to me that day. It was, it was awesome. Wow. I love that story. Um, and, (laughs) and so Kaylin, I wasn't familiar with before because I didn't really watch Ellen. I didn't really yeah. watch a lot of TV during that time. I was always busy being on it as well. So yeah. I'm like, I never really had time. But um, but he's great. How did you guys get connected? Did the, the company put you guys just together? Yeah, they they you know had like a little short list of people. They, they were very clear they wanted someone young who didn't grow up with the show to have a fresh set of eyes, uh, you know, and, 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 and perspective. And um, he was one of the, the people, and I also ha- was not familiar with his work on Ellen, or his. Food. I, I really didn't know who he was, but I knew there was like when I mentioned it to a couple friends that work in TV, they're like, "Oh my gosh, he's great, he's great." And it was one of those things. So I had tested a couple of people, like chemistry tests, you mm-hmm. know, and then he was the third one. And it was like literally, I, I met him in the waiting room at this recording studio, and it was like instant. Like I didn't even know he, we, we weren't even talking. It was like, a, it was like an energy. Mm. And then we, st- we, we sat in the booth and we did like, you know, our, our little, whatever we did that day, it was very fast. And I turned, you know, cause my, 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 my producer was in New York at the time. So it was all via zoom. And I was like, can we just stop? He's the one he's it. Like, like, you know, can we just not, not go any further? And they're like, we have to like make a deal with him. Like you can't just like, we need some leverage. You know? <laughs> You're ruining it. <laughs> I'm like, hire him. He's the guy. And, um, he's very special. Like I, I'm super impressed with him. He is going to be, I mean, I just, I just like, he's like, you know, he's 26, he's black, he's gay. He's from Kansas city and he, he's super clever and, and really kind of goes deep, but is really funny and quick. I mean, he's just got it. I'm just, yeah. I, I think he's, I like, I want to manage him because I think he's going to go on to just do such exciting things. I already want him on Dancing with the Stars. You know, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like, you need to be doing this. He's, he's great. Yeah. I, I just, I think we complement each other really, really well. Definitely. And he's great because he knows to give you your space when you're having that tennis match with like a Rosie or an Andy mm-hmm. and not yes. jump in and interrupt the flow. Because yes. when you're in a flow, it's so easy to like, just go derail. And so he doesn't derail, which is good. No, anybody like so many times, like we'll be interviewing somebody and he'll ask the question and like, I'm about to ask the same, like our instincts are so similar Mm -hmm. and you know, he's 26. I have a 20, 25 year old son. So he could be my son. Yeah. And yet he's just, I just, I just think he's, he's really, he's the perfect person to co-host this thing with me. That's so cool. Yeah, no, I really, really loved it. I was like, oh, I'd actually listen to this for fun. And, and I'm not somebody that would listen to something for fun because I like to listen to stuff to get better, which is what do you listen to? You do like self-help stuff. Is that I'm all self-help like, but I don't listen to a lot of it. Like anything I'm listening to. I I mean, I've only listened to a couple, like I listen to Jenna Kutcher because I love learning business stuff from her. Um, what about like Glennon Doyle? Do you like Glennon Doyle or Brene Brown? I've had them all. I didn't have Brene. I've had Glennon on the show. I love them. I just you don't. You listen to Esther Hicks a lot. I don't know. Oh, I love Hicks. Esther Hicks. I listen to Esther Hicks in the morning. I'll listen to Joe Dispenza. Have you done Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditations yet? 
No, but I know of him. I've heard about him. Life changing. Um, really? And what yeah. about Marion Williamson? Love. Love her. Yeah, right? we've had her on the show too. Wait, yeah. Ricky, this is actually a question I wanted to ask you before because you said it wasn't just the hair stuff, it was like a whole lifestyle change, it sounds like. What do you think led to that diagnosis? Was it stress? And then do you think de-stressing also helped create the chemistry for your hair to grow back with the proper nutrients? I think it's all of the above. Mm. I do think the stress and the con, I mean, it was, it was a mental loop that I was in all the time and it was getting progressively worse. You know, I was wearing this hair piece for lack of a better description. It was like basically an extension. Like I had the bangs. If you look at pictures of me from like, four years ago, three years, I'm wearing like a hair piece over my hair. Yeah. And um, I think they call it a topper or something, but I was really self-conscious about it. And so I'd have to get it tightened. It, it would sit, it was like attached to my hair. Yeah. And every 10 to 10 days, I would have to go and get it tightened because my hair would grow because otherwise it would flop around. And the whole, just that, the process of doing it was just super humiliating for me. Oh. I felt like I was being phony. Like I, I pride myself on being so authentic and real and an open book. And I felt like this piece of me was just this, 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 this secret that was like festering in me. And so I think once I surrendered, once I took matters in my own hand and kind of came clean about what I was going through and I, I couldn't do it without sharing my story because I didn't want people to think I was sick with cancer or that yeah. I was having like a, you know, a mental break or something. I wanted to just be really real about it. But once I made that decision, I think surrendering and just not giving a shit about it anymore and just being okay with rocking a bald head. Like I really was thinking it's never going to grow back and I'll just, I'll just be, I, I look kind of cute with a shaved head. You I did. actually was okay with it. Yeah. I, you know, you don't know, you don't know how you look until you do it, <laughs> which is really scary. Really it's like scary. a total leap of faith. Yeah. I was it was the scariest. I mean, I've done scary things. I've given birth to my ba baby in my bathtub. I've done like rad, like badass moves in my life. This was this was definitely the the, the scariest thing to to kind of to take charge. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I did. And it was the transformation was internal more than it was even physical. You know. Did you meditate? Did you do anything? I know you did the ayahuasca journeys and stuff like that, but did you I meditate? mean, I, um, did I meditate before I shaved my head? Did I? No, like, after. <laughs> after? No, yeah. after I felt so liberated. I felt so free. It's, it's like those words aren't strong enough for the, 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 the feeling of just, I've been I've been just set free. Yeah. And, um, and I went on, I went on one TV, I went to on good morning America with Robin Roberts. Cause I, you know, I don't want to do one thing. And that was the, it I did my post in on Instagram and then I talked to her and it just, I just felt like I'm okay. I'm okay. And what I didn't, I didn't think of at the time is that it was going to really strike a nerve with so many because mm -hmm. no one had ever talked about that before. No woman had ever sort of come out with that. Wow, I didn't realize and I, that. And I, I didn't want to be the poster child for women's hair loss, but I do feel like it is helpful when we can talk about our secrets. You well, know, also I, I just, the fact that you have come out the other side too is so inspiring and encouraging for people. Like there's a goalpost now, like it can yeah. happen. It's possible. Yeah. And I think all the things that have happened since like meeting my, my partner now, I don't, I don't think, I don't know if that would have happened if I hadn't come to this place of true self-acceptance, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and he, he's, you know, he met me, my hair was this short. My hair was like a quarter inch, half inch. And wow. I, you know, he met me, I was not his type. I was the opposite. Like he's six foot six, my guy. And he, you know, he used to date like six foot tall blondes, like <laughs> sinewy, like yeah. those type of girls, women. And, you know, he meets me, I'm five, three on a good day. I was wearing a giant tie dye moo moo and my burning man <laughs> hat and my, my like tripping out of my car. Yeah. And it was not a love connection at first, but now like we've been married now since January, we live, you know, in my new house in Malibu that I built for a long, long, it took forever to build and wow. moved in together. Yeah. Cause you lived in your old house for a long time. I was in my old house. Did you, you came over my house? I've never been there, and, but I know you lived there for a long time. Oh no, I did. I came for an interview a long time I ago. I think you yeah. did. You interviewed yeah. me. And then I remember, I have a picture that I found out to you and me at Richard Slimmons. Oh my God. Richard, do you remember? <gasps> I have pictures of us. Will you, you send me piece. that? I have to, yes, I, I have to have find, have I come them. across it. Oh, I'll find it. I'll find it. Bless oh, his soul. That sweet man. I, you know, we both were like, 
we were so giddy to it was be the hanging best out day ever it was like a moment in like history like it was, a it was exercise class thing. yeah slim in studios and it, yeah that and that was when i'd lost all the weight like i yeah. basically you know it was like 120 pounds or whatever and uh yeah he was he was so sweet. He was actually on my old show too. He was on my old Ricky Lake show. I'm sure. I remember he he was a surprise. He won one year. He came out. I remember it. And I was I, I was wearing a little mini skirt, and he picked me up and he spun me around. You know, you know how he is. He's the cutest. But, I know. Um, when all of this yeah. stuff started going down, I really thought about going to his house and just breaking uh, in and being like, "Let's go. Are you okay? Like, what's happening?" But like, you know where his house lives. I, you know where he lives. I do. Wow. Yeah. But, I, uh, you know, he's, obviously, he's I don't like, want to break into Richard Simmons' house, yeah, but I, mean, I was—I yeah, felt not, compelled to try. I would do it with you I, if you did it with me. The desire, <laughs> I have the desire to to just to just sit down with him and show him love because he really is one of those precious yeah. people that has given to so many. And uh, I all hope he he's did okay. was spread love. Yeah. No, I just had that's the memory when I look at you and I, you know, of course I love you and I love your career and I love everything you Thank do. You. And when you did, you know, Dancing with the Stars with Derek, I mean that's like I share this special yeah. experience with you. But I think back of that day when we, we were there at that studio and that, I'll look for that picture. I promise I'll try to find it. Please. I I found it in my looking through all my old stuff. I know. I just went through photo albums. I'm organizing everything in my house. And my house is super organized my closets are my secret. So there's so much jammed in these closets. I'm like, I am organizing every last corner. So I've been going through the final thing was my bookcases in my living room. I had to go through all the photo albums and yeah. like, okay, I'm going to find someone to come digitize everything. And I was just going through old ones the other night and I was like, wow, I've done a lot of cool stuff. Right. I know. And that's the fun thing about the podcast. Cause I didn't like look back at the show of all the people and all the subjects that, that we covered and it's really fun to kind of reflect yeah. because it's just because you don't have time in the moments. Ago. Yeah, because you're in the moment. You're yeah. in it, and you're not. Yeah, and so I was always like thinking forward, thinking ahead. Yeah, and now it is fun to look back. You know, you and I, we've been around for a really long time, and we've done and we're some young, cool but shit. we've done a lot we're since still, we were young. I know you're you're younger than me. I think you you probably are ten years younger than me, but I, 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 yeah, it's like with with this aging comes wisdom comes like appreciation. And um, yeah, I really wouldn't change a thing in my yeah. life. Honestly, there's been hardship. There's been a lot to go through, but it's all, there's been so many gifts on the other side, you know? It's funny because I think we also connect. We have, we have a shared kind of like um, outlook, like that sunny kind of thing. You know, there was something I was reading where you're like, your friends are like, they laugh at you because you just like jump out of the car and you're like, it's going to be a great day or whatever. And we have that. Kelsey has it too. We have that kind of like zest for life. Absolutely. Joie de vivre. No, for sure. I am that person. I am an optimist. I wake up every day. I can't wait to see what is going to go down today, you know, with the exception of right at this moment, because the election on, uh, happening tomorrow I am, I am very much a nervous wreck. Like I am feeling very, very uptight about the state of the world and stuff. I mean, that's, <laughs> the, that's the weird thing is like my life, my bubble, my, 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 my children and my husband's children, we are in a state of like bliss. Everyone's healthy. Everyone's happy. We, you know, we're all very it's close. It's a good season. Like, it's amazing right yeah. now. But like outside of, you know, that little bubble, oh, it yeah. just feels, you know, I, I, I just all the people suffering and all the divisiveness and the hate and the fear. I mean, it's just, yeah. So it's, I'm, I'm, I'm very conscious about keeping my home space as, as, I don't know, as protected and as positive as possible. Yeah. I, um, I believe though that what's meant to be happens for the greater good and if that can offer you any peace, um, I am a journalist, so I never discuss politics. And I, um, I, I really just think that, you know, it was funny. A, a friend, my trainer, was with me the other day, and she was talking about how people are are going back to the roots of like, you know, gardening and natural health stuff and this and that. And I'm like, you know, we went so far the opposite way. <laughs> with technology advancing the way it has. And there's a lot of good that comes with it and there's a lot of bad. And now I feel like we're the pendulum swinging the other way. It's like naturopathic medicine and let's, you know, get back to like, you know, clean eating and this and that, like everything balances each other out. The problem is usually we have to go to extremes mm -hmm. for that to happen. So yeah. unfortunately 
I think the state of affairs have gone extreme probably for our greater good so that we can wake up and, and, and take some action. That's the furthest I'll go. And whatever that is, again, there are different seasons in life. There's different seasons in the world too. The, the bad seasons in our life are also for our good. Think of the transformation that you've had in your life through the bad times. I mean, I know I've been on my knees too. Those bad times, if you can remember and hold on to, okay, this is happening for my my highest good. What that is now, I don't see it and I'm really upset or whatever it is, but I know everything's going to work itself out. And it really does. Yes. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. But I, I, I... I feel like I don't handle crises well. Mm. <laughs> like when shit goes down, for example, 9-11, I was there. I watched the plane hit the building. I lived in the West Village and I did not keep it together. Like I, you know, I was super traumatized and I had I had a newborn and a four month, four-year-old at that time. And you wonder why. So I, <laughs> Yeah, I know. It was, I was definitely like hormonal and I, you know, it was, it was completely Your terrifying. Your mother but, trying like, to protect two little, little babies. Yeah. And I left New York. I ended up leaving my job. I mean, my, my talk show, I had to stay a couple more years, but once my contract was up, I, I moved to LA and I started a new, and I started making documentaries and, you know, really focused on what I consider to be my life purpose, which is, you know, making these films about women's reproductive health. And, um, but my point, my point is that like, I don't know. I, I I don't know what my point is. I I it's like I feel like you don't handle I'm crises an optimist. well. Yeah, I I just I don't know. So like I'm feeling this like stuff bubbles up where I get super anxious. So mm. I am like anxious. Of course, I do believe that things will shake out the way they're supposed to. I believe you know in all things happening for a reason, but it it definitely triggers the like the trauma response or the you know like stuff in me that I, it's, it's something I can't control, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I just, yeah. So it's like, it's, it's weird. I have that piece in me along with like, yeah. I'm very easygoing and very like positive And, you know, I also wonder, like we put a lot of stock in a savior, like this person is going to save us. They're just a person. It's really right. up to us to change Absolutely. our behaviors. And, yep. and they'll do whatever they can. And really like, it's a lot to ask of one person to run so many things in whatever kind of office they are in, but it really is up to us individually to be on our paths to getting better and, yep. and, and, and making better choices around our lives and in the community. Um, yep. Yeah. So. And that's what I do with the documentary work I do. I yeah. have a new one out about birth control. Called the I know. I haven't control. seen it yet. I can't wait. It's, it's, it's really good. You know, and again, it's about informed consent. Mm-hmm. It's about informed choice. All of my films have that same through line. We made a film about cannabis. I think I, was I remember on, oh, I we did I that. Yeah. Yeah. That helped and me so, so much it, with my mom's cancer journey. Oh I, yeah. I'm, again, I'm, I have not followed your journey. I'm so sorry for Thank your loss, you. but it, it was helpful for her with yeah. her palliative care. Yeah. I mean, it's an incredible plant. And, uh, but like my, my, you know, my, my purpose is kind of using my sort of name and, and, and my curiosity and go and explore these topics and, yeah. and, um, give people access to the information so they can advocate for themselves and make the best decisions for them. Um, no judgment, you know, it's like, I, I so, you know, I made the one about birth, the business of being born and, uh, yeah, it's all, it's all to give the consumer or, you know, the, the, the patient access to the information to make uh, an informed choice for them. So the birth control one, as you're going down this curious journey, what was like some of the more shocking things that you learned? Oh my gosh. Well, it was a head spinner. The whole, the whole film, you're kind of like, you're outraged because it's, it's a lot of this you've never been told before. So for me, I didn't know the hair loss is a huge side effect for birth control, hormonal birth control. I was not told that. Wow. And, and who knows if I would have made, I was on, I was on the pill for two decades, yeah, on me and too. off for two decades, you know? Yeah, it shut and down it was my never whole reproductive to system. <laughs> which is what it does. That's and I wasn't able to have kids. Yeah. Well, so do you, do you look to that? I, that I think being, for sure. Um, I think, well, I think there are a couple things. I think that my body, I, I burnt it to a crisp working and, um, and wasn't taking care of it. That's why I'm always yelling to the young ones that you can only do so much. You can only go so far. The transmission, everything's going to start dropping. 
if you don't start taking care what of yourself. What weren't you doing? What Because you looked like you were so healthy and, and like in such great shape. I mean, were I was working well? like 18 hours a day, seven days yeah. a week. I wasn't eating as well as I should. I wasn't really paying attention to the signals my body was giving as I was shitting the bed little by little over time. Now, it went yeah. a long time. But, um, but I do think the birth control shut everything down so intensely that when I went to start doing IVF, they told me you can't have kids. You have no follicles, you have no nothing. And I was like, that's not my body. I know I come from fertile people. There's no way yeah. this is my body. And yeah. then soon after I did some acupuncture, things kind of came back online, but I was never able to get pregnant and it didn't make sense. Now, I think the universe was playing a larger role because of the brain tumor. If I'd gotten pregnant, that would have grown right, the brain tumor right. more and I would have had a bigger problem. So I think I wasn't really meant to be, but um, but I don't think the birth control pill did me any favors and I wasn't having sex at a young age to like really, you know, I was in college when I got on the birth control pill. So <laughs> yeah, it's not like yeah, I really no. needed to stay on it very long. Well, one of the things that, blew my mind more than anything else I learned is that it changes your pheromones. So it changes who you are attracted to what? when you're on hormonal birth control. And it's like scientific. Yes. And if you think about it, like your body is shut down when you're on those drugs, right? It shuts you into basically menopause. So your body is not looking to procreate, right? So you tend to be drawn to a more, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing, but it's basically more like brother than other. Like you tend to choose a less kind of what? macho. I know, I know, I know. The girls know. are freaking out in this, in the engineer booth. What? No, it's, it's crazy. I know. And I, oh I, Abby, my partner and director, she's much more eloquent in sharing this. But for me, like I, we have this doctor, Dr. Keith Bell. He works, he's a fertility specialist, acupuncturist, and he says he sees clients over and over again. Uh, he sees it with lesbian couples, lesbian couples who come and want to get pregnant. So they go on the birth control pill to, they say to regulate their cycle, but you're not really, they, they, they do that to get you to, for the fertility stuff. And she, he said, he sees it all the time where the lesbian is not, is repulsed by her partner while she's on these drugs. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And That's when she goes bananas. off, it's back to normal. So, yeah, so you think about, you know, young people, they get, you know, they, they fall in love, they get married, they go, they're on some sort of hormonal birth control because most people are. And they get and off of it. And then they start family planning and then they're not into their dude anymore. <gasps> yeah. Whoa. It happens a lot. And so that really just made a lot of sense. And certainly for Abby, who'd chosen partners when she was on the pill years back, you know, piecing the dots together. You know, just like putting it all together and be like, whoa. Yeah, I know. It's a head spinner. Wow. Pheromones. It's so nuts. Okay. What else? I mean, obviously, did you I guys mean, make, see a pattern in fertility issues? Definitely. I mean, yes, that has been. I mean, it's all anecdotal. That's the problem, you know. And in, in our film, we also talked to families that lost their healthy, vibrant daughters to blood clots and pulmonary embolisms, you know, Yaz and Nuvering and all of them. And, you know, there's a lot, there's, there's, there's not a lot of cases, but there's enough when it's your child yes. that's succumbed to this, you know, and it's, you know, we had about eight, eight families talking, telling their story. And, you know, so many of these families take a payout from these, these drug companies and they can't, they have a gag order. They can't talk about it. So it's just, these families want a big warning label on the packaging that says this can kill you just like, you know, cigarettes can. And, um, they have yet to get that. I mean, it's, it's lit, it's in the tiny, tiny prints, you know, on the whatever page, but it's just, again, it's about informed consent, informed yeah. choice. And, um, there's a lot to consider, you know, it causes low lying depression. It, 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 you know, if we're not told of these potential side effects, we think that it's just us. That's <gasps> our personality. That's I so I just recently was thinking about when I was in college, I'm like, why was I so sad? I was so sad, but I had just gotten on the pill. <gasps> I would stand yeah. on Friday nights and cry to like Magic 106.7 radio. I would just cry. And it didn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah, holy it moly. Could have been the pill. It <gasps> could have. I know. I really, um, I don't know. I mean, we, we're we not about scaring women off of these drugs. That is not our agenda. We just want people to know, you know, so yeah. they can not think it's them. But, oh, I'm just moody or, oh, I'm this yeah. or you know, it really can be these drugs that affect every aspect of who a woman is, you so know? 
what would you suggest people take instead or do instead? Well, I'm not, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not suggesting anything. I think people should do their homework on something called fertility awareness method, which is not pull and pray, which is not the rhythm <laughs> method. It's, it's, I it's, never heard it's of pull actually, and pray. I've heard of pull out, but I love oh. pull and pray. <laughs> <laughs> I pull and pray yeah. a couple of no, times with Kevin. It's learning. It's, it's, <laughs> It's truly learning your body, true body literacy, learning exact. Cause you know, did you know that you really can only get pregnant four or five days out of the month? Yeah. You when you're trying to get pregnant, you realize that really fast. You're like, yeah, damn, I could have never been on the pill and been just fine. I would have known my window. Alisa VT. Um, is, I love Alisa. Alisa's in our film. Yeah, I, it was amazing. so funny. I was like, Ricky's going to be on my show. I feel like I need to connect you guys. She's like, I already know her. I'm like, perfect. Oh yeah. 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 Um, she's a, she's a great, great, um, person we have we have the top 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 yeah she's the best in our film she's incredible and there's a lot of them there's a lot of amazing practitioners they all are mds and phds and you know and they know what they're talking about so we we have a master class series that we produced after the movie because the movie leaves you like what do i do now it's very much like oh my god so much information what do i do yeah and we have these interviews three-hour interviews with these amazing people like elisa and so we did a masterclass series, which focuses on, you know, PCOS or what to do to get off of the pill, like what supplements you can take, how to make it an easier transition, fertility awareness method. We talk, you know, extensively about that and it's tracking your cycle. It's, you know, it's, and, and it's complicated because obviously what's going on with Roe v. Wade, it's, it's, it's an interesting climate to be talking about non-hormonal options. There's also the non-hormonal like popper IUD uh, by Paragard and there's new kind of stuff coming along the pike that are, that are non-hormonal for, for people to consider. Well, it's interesting because as I go down the rabbit holes of health deeper and deeper with the show, I really see how sad it is that we really don't get education growing up on the things we really should be getting. It It makes me want to start a school so bad because we should understand our bodies in a real way growing up. And if you did, first of all, you're, you're, reproductive system, understanding the days that, I mean, people could be smart and say, okay, I'm not going to jeopardize getting pregnant. I won't have sex those days. If I'm going to have sex at a young age, Mm -hmm. unfortunately people are going to do whatever they want. Or use a condom. Or use a condom and don't do it on those days because things break. But, um, but it's also understanding your health in general, like how to eat properly and then cafeterias supporting that, right? Like Elisa was on the show the other day. She, changed the way I eat forever when she talked about the endocrine system and how horrible we are to it when we wake up and we have our coffee and then we have a muffin or we have whatever. And the endocrine system is like, what the heck is going on in here? And she's like, you got to eat vegetables first, protein and fats, and then your carbs. And so I was back on the phone with her this morning. I said, I've been doing it and I really see a difference in my body. I said, but is is, are the vegetables first for every meal? She said, every meal. It's like a layering effect to keep yeah. the glucose levels stable. So everybody should know about glucose levels, not just diabetics or anything like that. You really need yep. to know that fats keep your, your glucose stable so the body isn't having to you know, rush an emergency amount of insulin to take down the sugar level. Like This is like basic stuff we should know when we don't until it's an issue and then you have to learn it when it's overwhelming. Yeah. Yep. 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 And I think women, you know, for me, I'm now perimenopausal. So I'm just like, this is the first month that I actually was late with my period. So I've not had a hot flash yet. I haven't had any of that stuff, but Elisa Vitti was talking to me about seed cycling that you can, I don't know if she talked to you about that, but you can have different kinds of seeds during the course, like your luteal phase, you have, I can't, I I can't remember what they are, but like flax seed and then you have this, you know, and that all helps with you know, the symptoms and stuff you're going through. Yeah, she said you don't need to have any of those symptoms if you do the right things. And, um, oh, was uh, it was flaxseed. It was a combination for the hot flashes. By the way, you need a sleep number bed for that. A sleep number? Yeah. yeah. So sleep number? I haven't had a, I haven't had a, had a hot flash yet. Okay, I'm 54. but be prepared. First of all, I, I, we got, got one and we love it because it has a cooling top to it. You could probably just get the cooling top for your, whatever your bed is, but um, yeah. At night, I tend to get a little warm, and I pop that on, and I am good. So I'm ready for so it's any like an minute. air conditioner. It's an yes. air conditioner in yes. No Think of way. your air conditioned seats in your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. All right. Or heated okay, seats, sleep, whatever. You said sleep, sleep number. number. Right. Yeah, you need the All cooling right. mattress. Bomb.com. Okay. 
but right. you won't have them if you do the right things Elisa's teaching you. But yeah, basically I'm, there's... I'm trying. I try. <laughs> I mean, she is... Her wealth of knowledge, she's she's amazing. All of these people. I wanna, I'll send you a link to the film. You've got to watch the film. I can't wait to watch it. I, I loved the... Um, uh, the marijuana one. What was it? We the people. It's called Weed. Weed the people. Weed yeah. the people. Yeah, Weed. that's um, still on Netflix. And, and then, then where uh, is this have, one airing? This one, it kind of we couldn't sell it here in the what? U.S. What? Yeah, we could not sell it in the U.S. What do you mean? We are still looking for a buyer. Everyone passed. I think they couldn't take on. I don't. I don't know. Big I don't pharma. Know. I, yeah, I think that they're. You're I mean, joking. It's, it's After all the success, it, it was so frustrating. Because it could not be more of a hot topic for right now for like women's empowerment, body literacy, sovereignty, body sovereignty, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's just been been very frustrating. Like I couldn't even go on like a show like Good Morning America. They love having me on, but they want to talk about my hair or my my marriage, but they they wouldn't wouldn't show a clip of the film. They would talk about it, but I had to be very, very specific about what we say. And they wouldn't show a clip because standards and practices, you know, because they're, they're, they're being funded by big pharma. Isn't that you know? so funny? So I remember working for the Today Show for so many years and it was at the time I was at Access Hollywood. So I was a hybrid that they weren't used to. Now they've got Michael Strahan hosting and you know, hybrids are normal now, but I was right. an, the first hybrid and I had my Pantene deal and whatever. And they would give me such a hard time about my advertising deals. And I'm like, but they're out in the open and I don't have to do a story if it's, you know, denouncing Pantene or its competitor, like it's very obvious. You guys are taking money from them behind the scenes quietly and not able to put on a segment like this that would actually help people, which is why you're in business supposedly. Yeah. And Ah. it's only gotten worse. You know, all of these, they're all joining together and it's just, yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, cause I, but the movie, we I just got back from Berlin. The, The movie premiered at the Berlin human rights festival and it was in London as well. And it's just, it's so interesting to see it with an audience, to sit with an audience that's not US based. You know, yeah. the international oh, crowd yeah. is way more accepting. It's They're not horrified political. by us. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I, what I we do. I, I wouldn't say that. No, but what we do with our dairy like, farms, our meat farms, they don't yeah, do that stuff over there. Even commercials, like the way we show yes. pharmaceutical drugs. With families, happy families. And look at how amazing my life is on this drug that will. And then the, the, the caveats later is like, this could kill you in 30 seconds. You might get a heart yeah. attack. You might die in, you know, in the most glorious death. Like it's, wait, what? What happened to the happy family image? It's pretty laughable. Wait, and it's, so it's, Ricky, it's, yeah. you have an incredible track record with documentaries and, yeah. um, I don't even need to see this to be behind it because I know you and I know what you do. So how do we fix this and how can I help? I mean, oh, you're so sweet. I mean, if you know anybody at Hulu or Netflix, I mean, it's just, I I don't know. We, I feel like it's going to happen. Like we're still, we're trying different models. We, we offered for free. So we want to make the film, you know, available to, to everyone. We don't want access to be limited because of, you know, not wanting to pay, but no one wants to pay for a movie. Like no one, if we put it on, like it's like 14 99 or whatever, no one wants to pay for content because they're paying so much yes. for all of their subscriptions now. So we're just, we're figuring it out. It's just been really difficult, but the movie is, is so strong. It's so heavily vetted. We have the best of the best people giving such great advice. So I, you know, it's just going on. It's a slower journey than I thought. What you know? about, well, the last resort would be, like a four wall tour where you guys have like, you know, theaters all over the country, you do a tour and. Well, it's playing actually, I think it's the ninth or something. It's the eighth or the ninth. Maybe it's tomorrow night. It's playing in London in 30 theaters at the okay. Everyman Cinema. So it's playing there. And, you know, we, and we're offering it to like for free, I think, for we want, because we want women to have access to yeah. it. So what about Lifetime? Um, They're so about women and. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're still looking, we're still looking, you see it. And then maybe I'm going to see it. And then I'll talk to the folks at lifetime. Now if you want to come board, come on board as a producer with us and help us set it, set it up. I really would. I would love to. Yeah. I mean, I, we, I, I, I think it still has a lot of life in it and I, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud. This work I do with Abby Epstein, my director and partner I love is her. the most fulfilling. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. And it's the most rewarding work I've ever done. The business of being born, which came out almost 15 years ago about birth. It looks mm-hmm. at the world of birth, the medical system. And, um, it's the most impactful thing I've, I could have ever done in my career, yeah. you know? So I, 
I really, really like love these projects, but they don't pay a bill. We don't ever break even. It's just like a, you know, it's a labor of love. Well, for sure. I think for now there's got to be a, a, t- a turning of the tides on that because it's just too good. It's re- and it's just so important right now. Like it's just like this is like the moment. And I think young people, young millennials, they don't want to put endocrine disruptors in their bodies. Mm-hmm. You know, they they're onto something. And I feel yeah. like you know if they had access to this this you know That's this, this information, right? I know. So I'm hopeful. I'm very, very hopeful. Yeah. They watched us, you know, take all this stuff kind of mindlessly all these years and, oh, okay, this is what we do. Now everyone's like, wait, hold on. What do you want to put in me? Let's, let's think about this a little bit more. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to watch it right away. I love Ricky. Oh, that was so fun. Isn't she the best? That was so fun. And I cannot wait to watch that. After you watch it. I oh know. my god. Well, we can do a screening in the screening room. I would love to. Elaine, you're welcome. We'll Let's a little do it. screening. I would love um, we she will gave schedule you it. <laughs> um, but uh yeah, a lot of really good information in there. I just think that, you know, anybody who's gone through this hair situation is gonna really, really love all of her hair tips and stuff. And then um the the birth control, man. <sighs> Holy cow. The, I mean, the, you guys went everywhere from the Oprah story. Oh, Oprah to the, too. Like, I should have mentioned that. I everything. forgot. Yeah. You guys covered everything. But I, I love like what you were talking about at the beginning. Just your guys' like zest for life. Mm. Like, I'm sm- I'm smiling in here the whole time mm. because you guys are just so fun and giddy and just I love it. And I think that that's such a special spirit. So I don't know. I thought that was so fun. Thanks, Queen. You're welcome. Well, you share it, so you see it. Well, thank you. Um, all right, friends. Uh, if you haven't already left a review, hopefully this show will move you enough to go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. Actually, you don't have to go all the way there. You can just go to the summary of this episode, click the link, and leave us a review. We would be so grateful for that. Um, and don't forget to check out mariamenunos.com. We've got a lot of really fun shopping on there. All of my favorites. Everyone asks me. In fact, it's funny. Lately, a lot of people have been asking me what I do for my skin. Like I've been getting calls from all kinds of people. And I'm like, it's literally all on my website. Everything that I use is on there um, in different combinations and in different moments. So check it all out. And um, that's it, friends. Love you. Have a great day. Be nice people. Make good choices and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or mariamenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.